Once the patient has been screened and can safely have an MRI scan, ask them to lie supine on the scanner bed with their head on a pillow. Provide an emergency buzzer. Provide headphones to reduce scanner noise in accordance with the manufacturer's guidelines. Place a body coil over the patient's pelvis and another one over the abdomen. Slowly move the patient into the scanner and centre 2 inches or 5 centimetres below the iliac crest, over the anterior superior iliac spine. Now fully move the patient into the scanner. Ensure they're calm and comfortable before leaving the room. Once in the control room, select the patient from the browser or type in the details manually. Ensure the correct patient weight is entered so that the SAR can be calculated accurately. Select the correct protocol according to your hospital and radiologist guidelines. Begin with a three-plane localizer. This protocol starts with a T2 sagittal sequence. On the sagittal localizer, move the field of view so that it's centered on the rectum. Make sure the field of view, or FOV, is big enough to cover the anatomy within the pelvis. An FOV of 250 to 280 millimeters is usually sufficient. Select the appropriate coils and bring the saturation band in over the anterior portion of the abdomen to reduce artifacts from breathing, peristalsis and vascular pulsation. On the coronal localizer, angle the central slice so that it's in line with the midline of the body, passing through the symphysis pubis. On the axial localizer, angle the central slice so that it again passes through the midline and apply. Now plan the T2 axial. This should cover the abdomen and pelvis to include the symphysis pubis inferiorly to the poles of the kidneys superiorly. Turn on the correct coils, ensuring coverage of the area of interest. On the T2 sagittal sequence, scroll through the image to find the area of interest in the rectum, as you'll need to plan your slices through the pathology. While scrolling, trace the extent of the cancer and notice its angulation. Plan the T2 axial perpendicular to the lower rectum. Ensure coverage of the presacral space and if necessary, increase the FOV. This particular study demonstrates an extensive rectosigmoid tumour. This is the anatomy, tracking from the sigmoid colon through to the rectum and anal canal. As you'll notice, the planning is also a coronal for the upper rectum and sigmoid colon. Bring the saturation band in anteriorly, check the centering in the other planes, then apply. Now plan the T2 coronal sequence. Turn on the coils. The coronal sequence should be planned perpendicular to the axial view. Again, ensure coverage of the anatomy and increase slices or field of view if required. Ensure coverage of the presacral space. In this planning, you'll notice there's a coronal view of the lower rectum and an axial of the upper rectum and sigmoid colon.
centre in the axial and coronal views. To reduce time, you could reduce an average or NEX or NSA, but as the signal has now dropped, you will need to compensate by dropping the phase resolution. Once the amount of signal is sufficient, you can apply. Now review your images. In T2 imaging, fluid and fat are bright. Notice in the sagittal image the bright fluid within the bladder and bright fat around the pelvis. This is the T2 axial sequence. As you can see, a true axial cross-section of the lower rectum has been obtained, along with visualisation of the presacral space. Both factors are needed to achieve correct staging, whereby the involvement of invasion through the layers, namely the serosa, muscle layers, submucosa and mucosa, can be seen and measured. Active lymph nodes are also identified on these scans. Here you can clearly see the extent of invasion into the lumen and follow this into a coronal view of the upper rectum and sigmoid colon. This is a T2 coronal sequence of the lower rectal canal and an axial of the upper rectum and sigmoid where, again, the extent of invasion can be visualised.